This from your mailbag. I found this one really interesting. If Bill Callahan gets credit for Wyatt Teller, Ethan Posick, etc., um, should he get docked for Jedrick Wills at left tackle? Yeah, I, I did think that was interesting. Um, you know, my take is Bill Callahan is bigger than one guy, right? Yeah. If Jedrick Wills winds up being a flop, I don't think that's an indictment on Bill Callahan. And I think he still does get credit for Ethan Posick playing the best ball he's ever played and Wyatt Teller as well. But then the reader or the writer also asked about Jed Wills. And we talked about this, Dave. I'm higher on Wills than a lot of people mm -hmm. are. I think he is, at worst, an average NFL tackle. Now, you know, that's not worthy of the number 10 pick. Uh, you know, it's probably, I think the $14 million that they're paying him for that, for the fifth year rookie option that they picked up, I think that's fine. I don't think you're going to get a better left tackle for that kind of money. So I understand why they picked up the option. Now, there's still a ways to go, right? He still needs to finish better. We all we have to do is look at Twitter and to see all the plays that he doesn't finish. I think he's gotten better in that area. I think he still needs to grow. I certainly don't think he's reached his potential because there's a lot there. Um, and that's why these next two years are going to be huge. He's under contract. He knows what's waiting, right? There could be a massive contract for him, um, but he needs to play better. And, you know, I, I'm sure Callahan's pushing him as hard as he can. To me, right now, it's up to Jed Wills to take that next step. And we'll see if he does this year. Yeah, and I'm with you. I think he's been an average left tackle. The, the other thing to keep in mind is Bill Callahan's the guy that helped him switch from right tackle to left tackle. And don't minimize how difficult that is to do. That, you know, you're leading with different parts. You know, you're leading with a different part of your body. Right. That is unnatural, especially when somebody is trying to, you know, throw you in the dirt and, and get to the quarterback. So, um, but again, I, it, it's a fair question, and, and um, there was a lot going on. The, the thing that it makes you realize is there is nothing that is seamless switching sides, um, especially in the NFL. Yeah, and you know, there's a body language thing with Jed. Like, he doesn't exude this, I can't wait to get on the field, right? Like, he just walks kind of slow, he's got his hoodie up or his helmet on. You know, you watch him stretch, like we watch him stretch every day. There's, you know, just kind of goes through it. Um, and, I, you know, I think part of that's his personality. But if you're if you're looking at that and you have in your head that there's some plays he doesn't finish and, you know, is he working his tail off, I, I think that all feeds into this, man, he's underachieving. And I get that. Um, I, I just think he needs to be given a little more time. And if he doesn't get any better, then that's on him because I think – all the tools. He's got the resources with Callahan. He's surrounded by, you know, greatness on the line with Joe Batonio. Certainly you can argue Jack Conklin and Wild Teller and White Teller and Ethan Posick as well. So it's all there for Judd. Like I said, I kind of got a soft spot. I like talking to him. I find him really engaging when I do talk to him and open and honest. Um, but it's up to him to take that next step. Yeah, I agree with you. And, um, you know, he, he has a Hall of Famer on speed dial and Joe Thomas as well, who is more than willing to help. So, um, it is up to him, I would agree.